So again, thanks so much for joining everyone. Um, we'll get started with a few introductions. Um, first off, before, before even introductions, I do want to give a quick congratulations if you are an admitted student here this evening. Um, congratulations on being admitted this year. It is a very big accomplishment, so a round of applause for everyone. Um, you know, one of our most competitive years, so it is a huge accomplishment um, you know, to be admitted, and especially if you receive an invitation to one of these programs that we're going to talk about this evening, it's even more of an accomplishment, so that's awesome. Um, if you're a prospective student, you're looking to come to Binghamton maybe in a year, two, three years from now, I did see someone who was interested from the fall of 2024, which is awesome, starting early. Um, you know, we hope that you learn a lot about Binghamton and its special programs this evening. So we're going to get started with a few introductions. Uh, my name is Douglas Harrington. I'm an admissions counselor here for Binghamton University. I am a Binghamton alum, did graduate in uh, 2016 and 2017 with my bachelor's and master's respectively in business here. Um, and I've been in admissions for about two and a half years now. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Michaela, who's going to introduce herself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michaela Ridley. I use she and her pronouns. I am also one of our admissions counselors here. I work primarily with our out-of-state first-year students, uh, mostly working with students in Ohio as well as the greater Washington DC area, the DMV, uh, and students in my own home state of Washington. Great, thank you. Justin, how about you? Hi everyone. Uh, broadcasting from my backyard. Uh, my name is Justin Brim and I'm an admissions counselor. I've been working at Binghamton for five years and um, the best thing I've uh, had since working at Binghamton besides working with an amazing uh, co-workers is that I get to travel uh, all across the country and recruit. I've done that during my five years here and um, right now I wear a number of hats. I'm the liaison to the College of Community and Public Affairs and uh, the Education Opportunity Program and uh, do a number of other little different things with assisting with first year and transfer review. So uh, welcome everybody. Cool, thank you so much, Justin. Christy, how are you? Hi everybody, my name is Christy Friedrichsen. I'm one of our admissions counselors here. I also use she, her pronouns. Um, I uh, recruit mostly in Connecticut and Texas. Um, I did graduate from Binghamton in 2016 with my bachelor's in psychology uh, and I've been in this role for almost four years. So welcome. All right, thank you. And lastly, Craig. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Craig Broccoli. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Binghamton. I'm actually based in New York City, so I'm the New York City regional person. This is not New York City. This is Nature Preserve in fall time, which is a wonderful place to be. I've been working at Binghamton for about nine years now, but went to Binghamton as an undergrad in engineering and business for grad school. Um, and I cover a lot of different areas, but primarily the New York City metro area. I'll be on the chat end for this session, so I'll be behind the screens answering a lot of your Q&A that you might have. Thanks so much, Craig. And we do have a couple current students here with us this evening as well. Um, if we want to start with Marie, if you want to introduce yeah. yourself. So my name is Marie. Uh, I'm a sophomore studying geology and French. Um, and when I'm not tour guiding, you can find me, <clears throat> excuse me, with DCP or HBC two student theater groups on campus. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Tyler. Hi, guys. My name is Tyler. I'm a tour guide. I'm a junior. I'm from Albany, New York. Uh, I am a dual degree <laughs> student in both business administration and theater. And when I'm not tour guiding or helping out with one of these web sessions, uh, you can find me rehearsing for one of the theater department's main stage productions or helping out with one of the other theater groups on campus. Perfect, thank you so much to all involved this evening. We are gonna get started. Thank you, Michaela, for pulling up the presentation. And our very first program that we're going to talk about, if Michaela, you wanna to go to the next slide, is our Binghamton University Scholars Program. As you can see here, here it comes, there we go. So our Binghamton University Scholars Program is a really fantastic program um, reserved for the top one to 3% of the incoming class. Um, it all depends on the year and how many spots we do have available each year. Um, it is really great. It's reserved for students uh, in our Harper College of Arts and Sciences, our Watson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, our Decker College of Nursing, Nursing and Health Sciences, and our College of Community and Public Affairs. Now, you might be wondering where our School of Management is, and we will definitely be talking about that and our PWC Scholars Program in just a second. But those are the four schools that uh, do qualify for our Binghamton University Scholars Program. What's really nice about the Binghamton Scholars Program in regards to getting an invitation, it is an invite-only program, but here 
there is no application necessary and there's no specific deadline to me to be considered to be a part of the scholars program. So as long as you put in your application, whether it be early action, regular consideration, anything like that, you will be considered for an invitation for our Binghamton University Scholars Program. So no matter what you do, just make sure you complete your application and you're gonna be all set at least to be considered for the Scholars Program. And then if you do qualify, like I said, you're part of that one to 3% of the incoming class, you will be extending the invitation for our Scholars Program and we'll get into what exactly that means. So Michaela, if you'd... Thank you. So a little bit more about the Scholars Program, about their mission statement. So you can see here, the Binghamton Scholars Program is definitely focused on many different pillars uh, to make it such a successful organization. You have balance and well-being, you have civic engagement, you have integrity, leadership. It's all, you know, coming together to make sure that, you know, your four years here at Binghamton is as amazing as it can be through different extracurricular activities that do connect students to you know each other and beyond you know their time here uh, with scholars when you do eventually become alumni even um, some of the strongest groups that are formed at Binghamton are through different organizations that you're a part of and the scholars is definitely one big family that we have here so always definitely love to point out you know the different pillars that we have here as part of the scholars program So what's really cool about the scholars program is that in your first year, so first year students are required to live on campus. In your first year, all of our admitted scholars students all live in the same place in our scholars learning community. Um, our scholars learning community is located uh, in our newing community, which is one of the newer ones that were built recently. It was built in the early 2010s here at Binghamton. It was rebuilt. So it takes up about two floors in our newing community. Um, in our newing community, it is a typical corridor style. So you got two bed, uh, two uh, two beds to a room, with a semi-private bathroom in our broom hall, which is where they're located. But what's really nice is that you, scholars aren't going to be the only ones living in broom hall, and definitely in our newing college. We do have over 400 students that live in newing college buildings every year. So you're going to definitely have a nice mix of scholar students and non-scholar students to kind of mix and mingle with. So you're not going to just be combined with those scholar students. I know that's a question that we get often, you know, students are worried about that social interaction with non-scholar students. And I promise you, you're definitely going to have a large socialization um, with some non-scholar students as well. And of course, after your first year living in our scholars community, you are free to move to any one of our residential communities or even off campus if you'd like. Um, but we do have over 80% of our scholar students do return for their second year to live in Newing community with these other scholars. So it is a really unique thing that we do have here with our scholars program. And uh, it's one of the definitely the highlights that a lot of students take away with it because like I said, the scholars is a nice little family that gets to do a bunch of different things together. And what are some of the benefits, you know, the opportunities that you'll have as a scholar? These are just a few choices uh, or a few different things that we have here at Binghamton as part of the scholars program. Um, you do have some collaborative learning experience with students that are scholars courses. There are, there is a class every semester that you do take with as being a part of the scholars program all the way through your senior year. Um, and it does count, they, some of them do count for general education requirements. So that's pretty nice, you know, you knock a few of your general education requirements out of the way while also being part of the scholars program. They also do have great learning venture, uh, venues both on campus and off campus with different extracurriculars that you, extracurriculars I should say, that helps you, you know, bond with your scholars and learn more about the program. They do different trips. I know they go to Watkins Glen every year, they do a hike, um, they go out to, they've gone out to Howe Caverns, you know, different things like that. So they do get to go and different excursions every year as well. They do get to showcase their work locally and nationally. We've had several, several scholar students that will present whether they're in research. We do get a lot of overlap between scholars and our first year research immersion program and our source project, which Chrissy is going to talk about in a little bit. So, um, you know, lots of scholars get to present their work all over the country. It is the exclusive opportunity, as you see here, to earn the President's Honors or the All University Honors recognition upon graduation. There are some GPA requirements with that, but as long as you meet those and you're part of the Scholars Program, it is a way to earn our President's Honors here. One really big thing that we have is, as you can see here, the $3,500 Scholars Award. So a lot of people always ask about the financial 
aspect of the scholars program, if there's a scholarship attached to it or anything like that. So it is not really a scholarship, as we say, it's an award because it's something that you do have to apply for once you're here in at Binghamton and in the scholars program itself. Um, it is reserved for students who are participating in research, internships, or study abroad. Um, so like if you're studying abroad in Italy or something like that and you want to help, you know, relay the cost of, you know, your room and board or something like that, you can apply for this $3,500 grant, essentially, um, and it is awarded to a handful of students, you know, through their time to help them with this, um, the research or the study abroad and everything like that. We do have a great mentoring program here. There's mentoring all throughout the four years here as part of the scholars program. Um, so if you, you come in as a first year student, you get mentored by a scholars mentor, and then if you want, you can become a scholars mentor yourself. So you have that mentorship and that leadership right from your first day here at Binghamton. And you can see there that la very last short, uh, bullet there is you have a guaranteed choice of any major in any school or college here at Binghamton. And you, as long as you apply for that by March 15th of your first year here at Binghamton. So say you start in the Harper College of Arts and Sciences as a biology major, and you figure out that you wanna be in a, the School of Management as a business administration major, as long as you do all the paperwork and everything like that, you're guaranteed that switch into any program that we have by March 15th. So lots of great opportunities. These are just a handful. There's so many more, um, but I always like to uh, showcase this and highlight these ones that we have here. So that's just a little bit about the scholars program, a nice general overview. Uh, I always love this picture here because every year our scholars program does have a picnic, our first year picnic, um, and it's actually held at President Stanger's house. So that was the, picture from this year and all of our scholars, our incoming scholar students came in and uh, had our picnic at the president's house. And then if you come back for your second year, uh, the director of the program, Professor Ziegler, also has a picnic at his house. So um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great tradition that we have. Um, if you have any other questions about the scholars program, I am the scholars liaison. So you, my email and phone number, phone number are up there and you can always feel free to visit that URL if you do, uh, if you want to do a little bit more research on the scholars program. And with that, I believe our PWC scholars is next. So I'm going to hand it off to Michaela. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. So yeah, PWC is our PricewaterhouseCoopers Scholars Program, as Doug mentioned with the University Scholars Program that applies to most of our schools, most of our majors on campus. And the PWC program is the Scholars Program specifically for our students in the School of Management. So overall, PWC does have a lot of similarity to the scholars program, but there are some important differences and I can, I just kind of want to walk you through what the program does and how it works for students. So there are four main pillars to the PWC scholars program, academic excellence, professionalism, community service and fundraising and unique networking opportunities. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on all of those, but essentially PWC students are selected very similarly to the way they are selected for university scholars. Students do not have to apply for the pro program, at least as um, first year students, as incoming students, they are automatically considered for the program just by applying to the School of Management. Um, and then it's students are selected on a wide variety of factors. So kind of the way that I like to describe the program is it is a program for students that have demonstrated throughout their time in high school that they love to go above and beyond in everything that they do. And the PWC prog program is there to make sure the students still have the ability to keep doing that throughout their time at Binghamton. So the first pillar of the program is that academic excellence pillar. Um, I talked a little bit about this with how students are initially selected for the program, but there are also some criteria to making sure that students do continue to demonstrate that and do continue to be successful throughout their time here at Binghamton. So there are some GPA requirements for students and uh, PWC scholars are expected to either take on a second major, to take on a minor outside of the School of Management, or to take on an additional concentration. Um, School of Management uh, Business Administration students will take on a concentration and scholars would typically take on a second. And then um, there's uh, a lot of criteria that go into just making sure that students are continuing to demonstrate that same great work that they showed us throughout their time in high school. 
Professionalism is that second pillar of the PWC program. So there are two key components to this. Um, students will take part in the PWC Scholars Sophomore Case Challenge. So all um, sophomore students take part in this. And I realized I forgot to mention on the previous slide. Well, PWC is like scholars um, in that students are um, reviewed for the program and can be offered the program when they first apply to the school. For PWC, students can actually choose to apply for the program if they were not initially accepted during the spring of their freshman year. So by sophomore year, everybody that's going to be a part of the program is a part of the program. That's a big part of why a lot of these opportunities do start off in a student's sophomore year. And a lot of those like big the case competition and things like that are going to take place in sophomore year and beyond. So the case competition or the case challenge is essentially students are given the opportunity, they're given a um, problem of some kind to work through in teams. They're given a, a challenge or a problem that a company is going through and they work in teams to basically come up with innovative ideas for how to solve that problem and help um, to get the company through that problem. It's hypothetical at first, but students do essentially create an entire um, plan for how they would help the company solve that problem. All the teams will present to upperclassmen scholars, and then um, some of those teams are selected to present to SOM faculty specifically, and the faculty select three teams that will bring their presentation to the PWC offices in downstate New York, and they will present officially at those offices to PWC employees. It's a big event. Even um, the three teams that are selected will be brought down there, as well as all the other PWC sophomores. They'll be brought down for this networking event and they have dinner and they get to meet with the PWC employees, many of which are Binghamton alumni. So it's a great experience um, whether or not students are actually one of the three teams that are selected to go all the way through. And then scholars do also join um, com committees throughout their time in the program to help strengthen the program. A lot of these probably look relatively self-explanatory what it is they do. The one that might look a little bit confusing is the date auction committee. The date auction is something that is done every year with PWC scholars. What it is is essentially the opportunity for students to bid on um, spending casual networking time with professionals in um, lots of different business fields with both faculty and staff members on campus, as well as outside alumni and professionals. So it's just kind of a fun opportunity for students to both do some fundraising for some of their community service and get some of that great networking experience. The third pillar is that community service and fundraising element of the PWC program. So there is a huge community service element each year. The PWC scholars do uh, develop a whole year long community service program. They work on projects with local nonprofits in the Binghamton area. They develop a plan for what it is they want to do throughout the entire year. They work on those projects um, on the website, which I'll share with you at the end. You can see some of the projects that we've done in the past. Um, but this year they have been working with the American Civic Association, which is a um, local and national organization that helps immigrants and refugees in the Binghamton area to kind of get more acclimated to the community, it helps work with them on getting citizenship status and getting all the documentation that they need and all that kind of stuff. It's a great organization and the scholars have basically been working to revamp their space and to make it more accessible. Um, and for these community service projects, not only are they planning for this throughout the year, they're also fundraising for this throughout the year. Typically, scholars will raise about 15 thousand dollars over the course of the year for whatever project it is they're working on. So that fundraising, um, part of it does include that date auction that I was talking about, but part of it is also the freshman fundraising program. The freshman students do work to create fundraising opportunities to help raise that money. It's a great experience not only for them to help out with the community service projects, but also to kind of learn how to actually do an effective fundraiser and how to build something like that from scratch. Some of the things they've done before are like PWC scholars trivia night. They did like a survivor night one year. So there's a lot of ways that they get involved with that. 
And the fourth pillar is those unique networking opportunities. Um, so every January, a group of scholars goes on a 10-day international trip. Um, sophomores can take part in this all the way up through seniors in the PWC program. Some of the locations we've gone to in the past are China, Spain, the United Kingdom. These are great opportunities. Students get to do a lot of sightseeing. And also, no matter where their trip's going, that trip is always going to a place that has a global PWC office. So they will go to whatever PWC office is in that area. They get a lot of great networking opportunities. They get some um, short-term internship experience to kind of get that experience of what it's like working with international businesses. So that is fantastic for the students. The Ignite competition is really cool. It's essentially a networking and recruitment. Um, it's similar to a job fair, but certainly much more um, interesting and much more creative than that. Students will get the opportunity to network, but they'll be asked to do projects and challenges. They'll work with fellow students and they'll work with alumni and professionals, uh, sometimes with PWC, but we've had organizations, we've had um, EY come in, we've had Geico, we've had um, Gilman and, uh, Gilman and Sachs, I believe. Now I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah. Um, We've had a lot of different um, organizations come in and help out with that competition, but essentially it's a way for students to be able to get that networking experience without just having to sit down for an interview. They really get to demonstrate their communication skills and their teamwork skills and things like that. And the professionals that are at the event actually give students feedback at the end of the night. They So not only are they using this as a just getting to know more people opportunity, they really can use this to learn more about what their strengths are and how they can improve and how they can um, be more successful in their career throughout their time at Binghamton and afterwards. Uh, we do have the speaker series and the alumni spotlight very much tied together. These are either alumni that are brought to campus to um, do talks with current PWC students to talk about their career trajectories and timelines and things like that. And alumni are also spotlighted on on our social media pages. Um, so lots of ways for PWC scholars to meet with Binghamton alumni to get to know them better and really get, again, a lot of that networking in. I know I'm using that word a lot. Um, and then the one of my favorite things that they do is they do a lot of social events with other PWC scholars. They've done things like whitewater rafting and they go roller skating and skiing and things like that. So there are a lot of ways for students to really just interact with each other and build that network with each other. We know our PWC scholars are fantastic students. They go on to do amazing things after they graduate. So a lot of the times, the most valuable network that students have is really the students that they are in class with on a daily basis throughout their time here at Binghamton. Um, and on that note, I know Doug mentioned this as well, PWC scholars will, or students that are invited to the program as well, will often ask about, Am I just going to be with PWC scholars? Will I be kind of in my own little separate community or will I be um, integrated with the rest of the Bingham con Binghamton community? And definitely PWC scholars, while they do build this really tight, close-knit family, they do still work with the entirety of the Binghamton community. You're going to be taking classes with the entirety of the Binghamton community. It's not going to feel like this separate thing. It's meant to be really an enhancement of your overall experience at Binghamton. Um, so with that, if you do have questions, we are going to have that live Q&A at the end, but also if you have any um, follow-up questions, here's all my contact info. I am the admissions liaison to our School of Management and therefore to our PWC Scholars Program. And down at the bottom, that link www.binghamton.edu slash SOM slash scholars, that has some more information on the PWC program as well if you want to learn more. And with that, I will pass it off to Christy, who's going to talk to you more about some of our research opportunities for our incoming students. Great. Thank you so much, Michaela. Um, okay, so once we get to our slide, um, I'm going to be talking to you today about our um, two very special undergraduate um, research programs. Uh, and we're going to start with our first year research immersion program. Uh, we like to call this FRI. Um, and Marie, our current student here, she's also um, in the FRI program, or you were in the FRI program? 
was passive. Yes, I was. Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so I'm going to invite you, Marie, to jump in whenever you'd like, um, and I'm sure you'll be really important at the end when we have some Q&A. Um, so FRI is a really unique um, first-year research um, immersion. Uh, it gives them the opportunity to, to really come in and do research as um, a first-year student. Um, we were actually um, the first program in the Northeast to kind of pilot this, and we are still um, you know, having institutions come to us to for advice in building programs like this at their um, institutions. So, um, really, the the big goals about these two programs that you're going to hear about, and especially FRI here, is that you're getting that authentic research experience. You're coming in and you're doing important research as a first year student, as an undergrad. Um, so, uh, FRI is for students um, who are in our Harper College of Arts and Sciences who are interested in sciences, um, and then also our um, engineering uh, school, Watson. Um, this is available for students um, in uh, computer and electrical engineering um, and mechanical uh, engineering as well. Um, it's not really for students who are interested in um, biomedical engineering. Um, you'll see why in a second. Part of that is because of um, the uh, stream availability and also just because it wouldn't work with your schedule, but we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, FRI is a three semester um, course, so it'll be for your first um, full year, your um, first year, and then the first semester of your sophomore year. In um, each stream, you're definitely, can we go back? <laughs> Sorry. In the first year, um, you, in each stream, you're definitely going to work with your um, cohorts, your um, peers in your stream, and your research educator to um, generate those um, questions. Um, and the answers are unknown. And I think that's really kind of the thing they like to drive home is that, um, as you can see, it's not cookbook science. Right now, in a lot of your laboratories at, in high school, um, you are teachers, um, they set up a lab for you and they show you the steps and they know what the outcome is. Um, for these types of research that you're doing, these questions that you pose, um, the answers are unknown. You're doing real world um, research that's going to be important. That's um, the real questions, the hot questions right now. Um, you're going to do a research project um, over the length of the course, that three semesters. Um, again, those important real world tying to real issues in, in the world now. Um, and another thing that um, the FRI program uh, really prepares you for is actually presenting those um, results in um, a, a real kind of um, panel type way. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, with your uh, poster sessions. So on the next slide, you can see some of the skills that um, uh, the FRI program focuses on. A lot of it is those professional skills. I think in um, from the scholars programs to um, even the other program that we're going to talk about, um, we're really trying to um, give you the skills that are needed to go across multiple areas and really kind of give you that foundation to be successful in whatever field you choose to go into. Starting with communication skills, that nice foundation to be able to talk to everyone. Um, team skills, working together. Management, you're working on a project, um, managing what's happening each step of the way and knowing who's supposed to do what. Leadership skills, always very important. And technical skills. Of course, you're going to learn about um, research uh, processes and the nitty gritty um, in your, your programs that you're working on. And so the next slide will give you a overview of the program. We talked about it a little bit. It is for three semesters. Um, and in your first year, you're going to be taking your research methods seminar. So this is really going to give you that foundation of the research processes, um, talking you through how to pose a question and then what you're gonna do along the way to come up with the answer. Um, that's two credits. Um, and you're definitely going to earn a lot of the general education credits along the way. Um, for the first school, uh, first course, it is um, an oral speaking general education credit.
Um, it is taught by co, uh, co, co taught by FRI staff. Um, you're focusing on uh, a team project that explores real science problems, um, and you will have an opportunity to um, present your findings uh, again in a poster session. Um, so a lot of this is going to be literary based. You're going through um, and you have a question, but you're going to do some uh, first initial research and then um, kind of come up with uh, what you found and what you're planning to do next in this stream on the same kind of vein of research. The second semester um, is going to be your research stream lab course. So this is where you're starting to do that research, um, that real hands-on stuff. Um, and that's four credits, uh, and that's going to count towards a laboratory science general education credit. This one will also count toward the student's major. Um, and you're going to apply a lot of the knowledge and the techniques um, that you learned in the first course to this. Um, and here's where you de develop the research proposal uh, to do your um, research project in your third semester. Um, this is going to count as another four credits for a laboratory and a composition general education credit. Definitely composition because you're going to be writing um, your research uh, paper as well as your poster session. Uh, that's a a really big part of it as well, um, sharing your results. And you're going to conduct that real research um, either in the field or in the laboratory with your um, goal in mind. So um, here are the research streams. We have 10 different ones. Um, you'll see in the green are the majority um, of our Harper College um, streams. So they're going to be focused more on STEM. Um, you have bio, biogeochemistry, um, which is going to be, I think, more um, biology and chemistry, um, neuroscience, neuroscience, and psychology majors might feel more at home in those types of things. Um, environmental visualization, um, students who might be interested in environmental sciences or geography, um, they might be more attracted to that. Community and global public health, um, a lot of these uh, you may definitely um, find yourself gravitated towards, maybe just in, you know, um, your major selection, but also in your interests. And um, the stream that you choose doesn't actually have to be related to the major that you selected on your application or the major that you think you're going to go into. Um, it's really up to you as far as um, what you're interested in, um, but more times than not, it'll kind of align with um, your major. Um, and you can see in blue, um, those are the, the streams that are um, available to our um, Watson students, our engineering students. So um, Watson students are only in our image and acoustic signals analysis design stream. Um, but then we have our clean energy stream, which is split between our Harper students and our engineering students. Um, so you can kind of see the breakdown there. Um, and I know that doesn't give you a lot of information about the streams, but I will provide you with a link um, uh, to the FRI website so you can get some more um, ideas about what each one is about. Um, and the streams are, are kind of developed um, based on student interests, but also kind of the, the job interests, um, the jobs that are coming up, and also the faculty um, interests as well. So we have a lot of um, our faculty, um, I don't know if you know this by now, but we are a research institution, so all of our faculty members are doing research. Um, so we have a lot of our faculty members who are doing research in these fields, um, which is perfect for our students to to learn from. Um, so that's a breakdown of the streams. And um, next you can see um, what each research stream um, gets. So um, all the streams are a little bit different, obviously, based on the, the titles that were shown in the last slide. Um, but this is what each stream um, has available to them. So they'll have a team of three to five faculty um, members, as well as a research educator. Um, all of our, uh, a lot of different renovated laboratory spaces, which is really exciting. Um, real equipment that is specific for the research that you are um, actually doing. So it's very specific to what you're doing. Um, a supply budget, um, as well as undergraduate peer mentors. So if you're wondering what happens to the FRI students after FRI, a lot of them end up being um, peer mentors. So as early as that second semester, uh, sophomore year, um, you'll find a lot of those um, students coming back to help because they loved it so much and they want to give back to the program. 
program. Um, and then in each of our streams, um, there are 30 FRI students. So you'll be in some a really nice company um, with uh, 29 other people in your stream. So that was just a, a breakdown of um, the FRI program. Um, and then we're going to go into our um, source project. So um, like I mentioned before, um, I'm here to answer any questions and I'll give you my contact information at the end. And if you have any um, student-based questions um, for FRI, uh, make sure you're asking them so Marie can help answer them. Uh, she'll be a great resource. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, we are a research um, institution. So we have research in every major because like I said, all of your faculty members are doing research and they're not all STEM professors. Um, so we created this program that is very similar to our FRI program, but it's more focused on the humanities and societal concerns. So you'll see a lot of the same similarities here, a lot of the same breakdowns, uh, but I'll talk you through it anyway. Um, okay. So we uh, want to know why Source Project. Um, so this is definitely going to give you an opportunity to be a part of research, um, just not in the STEM field. It's still going to allow you to, um, uh, you know, generate questions um, and do research about those questions. You're developing those really crucial academic skills that, like we said before, are available to um, spread across all kinds of disciplines, um, and that is really applicable to real world world um, and to life. Um, you're going to gain impactful knowledge, um, again, those broad concepts that can be in a lot of different areas, and those communication skills. You can see a theme here, um, both uh, oral, so you're speaking, uh, as well as um, written form, so um, those papers and uh, posters that you are creating. And this is going to be a breakdown of our um, program. So instead of three semesters, the source project is two semesters. Um, so this is for all of your first year. Um, in the first year, you're going to be, uh, or in the first semester, you're going to be working on research methods. Again, the same type of um, foundation as our students in FRI. Um, this is four credits. Um, this is going to count towards your general education major or minor. Um, we do have 25 students in e each of our streams um, and these are going to be taught in high-tech learning studios a lot of those are brand new spaces on our campus and they're gorgeous um, and there's going to be a lot of concepts taught um, again that kind of foundation to teach you how to do research um, and then your research project is going to happen in the spring Four credits again counting towards your general education uh, requirements major or minor you're going to be doing open-ended research, either by yourself or as a team, whatever your research question calls for. Um, you're going to apply conceptual and method, not going to try, I've been talking too long, um, knowledge learned in the first semester. So whatever you learned in the first semester, you're going to bring that to life in the second semester. Um, and just like FRI, you're going to have the opportunity to present your research um, in your poster uh, presentation um, at research days. So you're going to give the opportunity for your peers and the whole Binghamton University um, community to uh, look at your research and um, see what you discovered. And a lot of of our students do publish their work in Binghamton University's undergraduate journal, Law Quarterly, and a lot of other publications too. Um, so lots of um, things to look forward to there. And um, here's a couple of our streams, actually all of our streams. We have six streams for um, the source project. You can see them there. Um, like I said before, they're really focused on the humanities. Um, so a lot of uh, advocacy, um, policies, uh, a lot of different, um, there's also like an anthropology type uh, vein through a lot of them too. So there's a couple different areas really focused on um, people to people and uh, kind of who we are. Um, um, as humans, which is really cool. And so a lot of those, um, just you can leave it there, but a lot of majors that we're looking for um, in, in these types of streams are going to be things like art, art history, um, history, philosophy, politics, and law. Um, a lot of those, uh, again, humanities rather than, than STEM majors, but those are the ones that I can think that, that would really fit to, to some of those, um, including um, the, the thinking through painting and some of the other historical ones like human nature 
nature, um, and a lot of them are doing work in the field, which is cool too. Um, so here's a couple of the student testimonials, um, giving you some time to, to read through that, um, definitely giving you an opportunity to hear what some students have to say um, about working in smaller class sizes, working um, together on a common goal, um, and a lot of different um, professor testimonials and things like that. And then on the next page, um, I have some really good information for you here, um, both for the source project and um, FRI. Uh, so you can see our directors. Um, Dr. Valerie Imbrus is the director of our source project, and um, she would love if you wanted to ask some more questions. She'd love to field those questions. That's her email. And um, then the FRI program is directed by Dr. Megan Fegley, and you can see um, her uh, email there as well. I've also included those links, so if you wanted to take a picture or write them down, um, our source project and FRI program are also invitation only, but you can let us know that you're interested if that's something you want to do. Um, we look at the application uh, of we look at your application and see if you're a good fit based on your major, based on any research that you've done, or even if you're just interested in it. Prior research is not necessary for these programs, um, but you can let us know that might, you might already know that you want to do research. Um, and the interest forms really allow us to kind of um, narrow down who we should be looking at, who might actually be interested in these programs. So it is not required for you to fill out the form, um, and uh, you know, it's also not not guaranteed if you fill out the form, but we would love to see that you're interested and then we can also give you some more information. And then you can also see my information there. If you have any questions about both of these programs, I'm happy to help you out. All right, thank you, Christy, so much. As you can see here, we've got uh, all of our contact information popping up on the screen, just in case you do have um, some more questions. Um, before we kind of move into our live Q&A with the counselors and everyone, I do want to hear from our students because we haven't heard from them yet. Um, so, Marie, I'm actually going to turn to you first. Since you were a part of FRI, um, would you mind just kind of talking us through your time with FRI, maybe what stream you were a part of, what you did, and maybe if you're doing research now, maybe what mm -hmm. kind of research you're doing and stuff like that? Yeah, so um, my freshman and sophomore year, I was part of the biogeochem uh, stream, which is the environmental science stream. I'm a geology major, so that was part of my interest. Um, and I studied purple and green sulfur bacteria, which sound kind of scary, um, but they are bacteria that live without oxygen. Um, so they pretty much breathe um, in sulfur instead of oxygen. So we study these bacteria, we tried to grow them in the lab. Fortunately, we did not successfully grow them in the lab, which is part of our entire year and a half of studying them. Um, it was kind of tricky, it was very difficult. Um, we actually learned that it was nearly impossible to make a sulfide solution that stayed sulfide. Um, so that was kind of how we ended the, the final semester um, with kind of some future research uh, for people to follow up on to eventually um, grow these bacteria. These bacteria are important, um, mostly because they can kind of convert um, potentially arsenic and antimony, which are two heavy metals that are found in our water systems um, and their pollutants. So if we can uh, kind of exchange them for different uh, types of arsenic and antimony, we can better clean our water systems. Um, so that was kind of our goal of our project. Um, we developed it from uh, our first topic, which is basically Green Lake um, in Fayetteville, New York, about an hour away. Um, we were given that as a topic, that was it. Um, and so we had to do some research on the lake. We found out that we wanted to study these bacteria um, and we got to decide which direction we want to take it in. So we took it in the um, kind of the microbacteria type of direction, um, which was exciting for all of us because we had never touched uh, you know, bacteria before like that. Um, and we used a lot of various instruments in the lab. Um, I see chromatography, which was completely new to me. Um, very expensive machines. They trusted with freshmen, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, so pretty much when we walked in our second semester freshman year till December of this past you know, uh, semester, I was using uh, state-of-the-art machinery, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it was a great program all around. Um, I currently am not doing research right now. But between my freshman and sophomore year, I did a research program through the FRI program, and I was paid to stay over the summer and do my research. So it was pretty cool. And that's awesome. And that just kind of attributes to the, to the just one of the many great things that our students are doing with, with FRI and everything like that. 
Now, Tyler, I'm going to turn to you here. Um, since we, uh, so now I, I, if, uh, I'm not sure if you're part of any of these programs, but since you're a fantastic tour guide that we do have here, I'm going to turn it over to you as just a general, general student question. You know, what, you know, what do you like about Binghamton? You know, why did you choose to come here? You know, different things like that. Cause I know we, we might have a nice mix of, you know, prospective students and admitted students and, and different things like that. So just your take on what it's like to be a student here at Binghamton. Yeah, of course. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm a dual degree student in both business administration and theater. And one of the things that really drew me to Binghamton was that obviously those are two very different majors and I have a lot of different interests and it didn't feel like if I came to Binghamton, I really had to choose to just only do one thing. I had so many different options and opportunities that were available for me. So my freshman year, um, I was undeclared and I started looking around at different majors that might interest me. Um, I was only in Harper as a freshman because like many other freshmen, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Um, but I started taking theater classes. I realized it was something that I was incredibly passionate about. It was always a passion of mine in high school and I want to continue it. But at the same time, I also want to have something else that I could pursue. So I really looked into the dual degree program. I followed all the prerequisites and then I met with Harper Advising and SOM Advising and made sure I got my dual degree um, application in by the end of the spring. Um, I wound up getting accepted into the School of Management in the fall of my sophomore year. And it has been a great experience. I uh, really have to focus on building my schedule each uh, semester but I've had so many great opportunities to um, meet people from the two different schools and programs and understand how, where there's so many different skills that have been able to um, transfer over. And I've had the opportunity as well, working uh, with so many different people in the School of Management, my classes to meet some people who are involved in the PWC program. And they've been fantastic pro uh, partners to have in so many of these different project groups. I worked with a, a few uh, PWC scholars for the um, J-Core live case competition, um, which uh, everyone who takes the J round of J-Core classes in the School of Management has to participate in. Um, and so we wound up working on a live case for Mazda. So they presented us with a uh, real problem that their company was having um, and all the students within the J-Core curriculum, they all worked on it. So me and my group, we had the chance to, uh, for a full week, work on the project. Um, we presented our findings and also presented some recommendations to, Ma to the Mazda Corporation. Um, and then we actually wound up being uh, finalists for the uh, project as a whole. So that was really great. We got to uh, present our project to a lot of uh, different Mazda re regional executives. That was great experience to have. And um, we were able to earn some extra credit points as well. Awesome, thank you so much. That's awesome. Of course. And congratulations on being a finalist and everything like that. Um, so thank you again to our students for being here. You, you, you always provide great insight, you know, to our um, all of our programs and all, and everything that we have to offer here at Binghamton. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over. We are going to do some live Q and A. We did uh, save some questions specifically for the end here. Um, so I'm going to uh, start with one of these questions here. One of them is, uh, when are students notified that they are invited to the scholars program? Well, that's a great question, and it kind of goes along with, you know, with FRI Source and PWC um, that notifications are not sent out with your acceptance letter. Um, they are going to be sent out sometime after, so you do have to keep monitoring for those offers. We typically do about two rounds of all of our programs, um, and then depending on how space goes, uh, we will, you know, look at the programs again to see if we can make additional offers. But they will, uh, all the offers will come sometime after your acceptance. So if you don't get it with your acceptance, please don't freak out. It may still be coming. So um, that is like not only with the Scholars Program, but with any one of our other special programs that we do have here. So another question that we do have here, um, I'm going to shoot it over to our FRI team, is that uh, do students usually get published with their research from FRI? 
Yeah, so a lot of our students do have opportunities um, to be published. Um, they are working with um, their research educators and their um, professors. So um, a lot of times their, their findings that they work on in the program uh, do have an opportunity to be published. And several times um, they do have opportunities to go forward with their um, uh, poster sessions in other venues other than Binghamton University's campus, uh, like things like um, different conventions uh, to share their research. So there's a lot more opportunities than just, you know, doing a research uh, program for school. It really does mean something. I don't know if, Marie, you can chime in at all for that. Yeah, I personally have not been published. Um, however, like your first semester, you're sharing the classroom with another stream, and I was sharing with environmental visualization. Um, and one of their success stories um, is about the, um, the little, the drone, or using drones to detect um, butterfly landmines. Um, so I heard a lot about it, which was really exciting. Um, basically, it started as a small FRI project and just kind of snowballed from there, and they're still working on it. Um, I have some friends who, after FRI, who were in that stream, are continuing to work on that project as well. Um, so it's pretty exciting. And then I also have one of my sweet mates who um, was in the ecological genetics stream. Um, and she and her group actually went to a convention this past year as well. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, another question that we got here in regards to scholars is um, if we could explain what the Guthrie Pre-Medical Internship is. And that is a fantastic question. Um, uh, thank you for whoever asked it. Uh, we do have a really awesome opportunity for anyone interested in pre-health here at Binghamton, who's also part of the scholars program, is this Guthrie Pre-Medical Internship. It is located at uh, Guthrie Hospital, out, you know, about 45 minutes away. Um, and it is an entire semester where you can have this internship and you are actually housed at basically at the hospital and are doing full rotations and everything um, during this Guthrie uh, pre-medical internship. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's no cost to be housed. You know, your room and board is all included, um, which is really nice. Um, it's an awesome opportunity that our scholars uh, do have the opportunity to pursue. So if you're interested in pre-health and do get a scholar's offer, that is something that you can definitely look into later on once you're here. So another question that we do have here is uh, kind of a question for both scholars and FRI. Um, is are students generally able to balance the workload of scholars and FRI at the same time? Um, I can answer from a scholar's perspective is that, you know, what's really nice is that your FRI, some of your FRI classes can count towards scholars. Um, they've worked it out really well that, you know, we do realize that there's a lot of overlap that, you know, students are in both programs all the time. So if you are in both programs, congratulations, that's a really amazing accomplishment. Um, but it's definitely... You know, you know, our students are definitely capable of handling both workloads. And I don't know if Christy, if you want to add to that, or Marie, or anyone. Uh, so what I would say is um, the as far as like, I, I think it was kind of clear and the the. Um, overview of the program, at least I hope it was. Um, the courses that you take for FRI um, and for Source, because you could also be in Source and Scholars, um, those courses are going to count towards your degree um, in some way. Uh, many of them do count towards um, your major, but a lot of them are going to count towards your general education requirements. Um, so it's not really in addition to your courses that you're taking. They seamlessly fit right into the courses that you're going to be taking anyway for your degree. And I think addition Additionally to that, um, both of these courses are designed for first year students. So uh, the, the design of the program is, is to make sure that you're able to handle it um, to, you know, to actually be successful in the programs. And we definitely have people available to help you with that. Uh, I mean, from all of your faculty and um, the peer advisors in FRI and even the other um, uh, resources we have, um, they're both designed for, for first year students. So. Um, um, again, maybe Marie wants to tune in, but um, I think students are definitely uh, capable to, to do that. Yeah, I would second that as well. I had no issue. And again, like my major, things seamlessly fit in. I'll have credit, you know, upper class credit, which is pretty cool. And um, the gen eds, it's, it's really nice that it gets rid of some of the gen eds. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm actually going to turn it over to PWC scholars for a second for Michaela and Tyler if you want to chime in you know being an SOM and everything like that um, you no know, we had one of the questions is uh, definitely the time commitment per week 
you know, for, for PwC scholars, you know, definitely with all the great things that they do over there and the different committees that they have. Um, you know, I know Tyler, you work on, you know, the case competition, everything like that, you know, just a general time commitment for, for students and what they can expect being in the program. Yeah, so for students in the PWC program um, specifically, definitely there are some ways in which there will be additional work that you're doing outside the classroom with some of those networking opportunities, social events and things like that. But there is some flexibility to you don't necessarily have to do every single thing that is done. So there is some flexibility to exactly how much time per week. And a lot of the opportunities for PWC scholars um, are things that are kind of built into the curriculum, very similar to how like FRI is built into your standard classes. There are some PWC scholars classes that those students have to take, but they count towards the major. They're part of their standard curriculum. As I mentioned, students typically will take on an additional concentration or a minor or a major, but they still do work with academic advisors to make sure that they're not doing that by overloading every semester, but that they are doing it by um, fitting classes in that also will count towards gen eds or removing an elective and replacing it with a minor or something like that. So there's a lot of flexibility to it. Um, there's definitely a lot of ways to get involved with other organizations on campus. It's not like PWC is the only thing that you will be able to do while you are on campus, but there's also, yeah, a lot of that flexibility. And Tyler, I know um, as a general SOM student, you can also kind of speak to what's that workload like, like and what else can you fit in? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I started my workload as an SOM student um, somewhat late in the game because I really had to start taking all those courses other than my prerequisites my sophomore year. And I, going into my senior year next year, I'm going to be in a good spot with both of my majors that I'm completely certain I'll be able to graduate on time. There has been for me, just because I was behind a couple semesters where I did have to overload a little bit, but even being involved, always being involved in a show, either in a club or anything else, I've always been able to manage it. And uh, several other people that I know that are in the PWC uh, program, um, they, I've done shows with them as well, and um, they were able to manage their time great. Um, and several that are, um, they meet all their commitments for the, uh, for the program, and they are always involved in many other different extracurriculars around campus. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we're getting about that time. So I'm going to ask just one more question here. Um, a question that I see a couple times in our questions is um, if for FRI and source, um, if you could go a little bit more in depth about maybe how students get assigned to their stream. Um, you know, a couple of students had some questions about, you know, is it first come first serve, different things like that um, for both FRI and source. Yeah, so um, when you are invited to participate in um, the FRI and the source program, um, we'll send you uh, an email with an enrollment form. Um, so we'll ask you to fill that out um, so that we know what your preferences are. Um, and then you do have to um, submit your enrollment deposit by May 1st um, so that we can lock you into that stream. Um, so we ask you to uh, submit um, your top three stream preferences. Um, so one through three, uh, one being the, the one that you want the most. Um, we definitely try to get you your top three streams. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of students are able to get at least one in their, their top three. Um, we try our best. Um, but what I will say, if you don't get into your top three, um, I I know it may be a little disappointing and maybe it's something you're not interested in, in at all and if so okay that's your choice to make um, but on the other um, side of it if you still want to do research and you're at least a little interested in it it's a great opportunity to get started and have some really great connections um, but I mean again that's totally up to you um, we do um, assign streams uh, after May 1st um, so you'll get your stream assignment um, after after May 1st Awesome. Thank you so much. And with that, we are about seven o'clock. So our hour is up. So I do want to thank everyone for joining us this evening, whether you are a prospective student or you're an admitted student. If you are, congratulations again. Uh, we hope all of you are excited about becoming future Bearcats. Um, I do want to thank all of my uh, colleagues and coworkers here that we have uh, being part of the panels and our fantastic students um, some of the best students ever here at Binghamton, and we hope that you can become one of them in the future. Please, if you do have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to us via email, phone, 
Um, we are having live Zoom chat hours every day as well. Um, thank you, for Michaela, for putting this back up. Um, these are uh, myself, Michaela, and Christy. If you do have specific questions about uh, scholars, PWC, FRI, any source, anything like that, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, or if you have general questions about Binghamton, we're more than happy to answer those as well. So again, from all of us here at Binghamton, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we do hope you enjoy the rest of your night and we hope you're all staying safe and healthy. So thank you so much again and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you Bye. everyone. Good night. Bye. <laughs>